hey you guys so I have a video that I'm getting ready to share with you now I really believe it's gonna bless you I kind of stumbled through it <laughs> I kind of stumbled through it in my excitement to share um, and I really don't want to edit I, I want to give you it all I want to just give it to you in the real <laughs> but I um, want to say I want to ask you please listen to the whole thing listen to the whole thing and share this video I am not soliciting this for myself it is not for my benefit that I'm asking you to share but if you know anybody that's going through if you know anybody that will be blessed by this video if you know anybody that is struggling struggling with dealing with the past dealing with um, bondages things that they have went through things that might have been done to them things that they might have done you like like if you're struggling if you know anybody who is um dealing with any type of emotional duress um i encourage you i encourage you please share this video with them and it's time out and it's, it's enough for the struggle it's, it's, it's enough people need to be healed people need to be delivered people need to be set free for real for real they need to see for real for real the healing and deliverance that Jesus has done for us for all of us um, let's just get to the video hey you guys hey I got something I want to share with you I think that it's this is really gonna be a blessing to you um, or even to anybody that you know that might be struggling emotionally struggling mentally struggling in their mind and in their thoughts with things that has happened to them in the past I there's a story that's in the Bible that I want to share with you because I have found in sharing it in the past with others, I have found that this is a story that not many are aware of. And I definitely want to share it with you again, especially if you are going through any type of torment. If you have any type of tormenting thoughts, let's deal with that right now. And let's kick them tormenting thoughts to the curb. So... And put my glasses on because I got some reading to do <laughs> it's not a lot of verses I gotta find it though it's either in Zephaniah or it is in Zechariah I think it is in Zechariah because I just looked at Zephaniah okay so this will be Zechariah found it <laughs> okay so this is Zechariah this is chapter 3 of Zechariah and he's being shown a vision. I'm reading it from the New King James Version. It's 10 verses, y'all. 10 verses. Bear with me. You're going to want to hear this. You're definitely going to want to hear this. So what we're seeing in the vision, let me give you an overview. What we're seeing in the vision is a courtroom set up. A courtroom. And Zachariah is being seen. This <clears throat> Zechariah is being shown this person on trial. This person's name is Joshua. He's being shown this person on trial. And Satan is in the courtroom too. So let's look at this. It says, <clears throat> excuse me, it says, then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. Oh, okay, Let's keep going. And okay, so I'm gonna say why I like did that little pause. So it says, He showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'm a very visual person, so I have to like look at this so I see a courtroom set up let me do this I see a courtroom set up and here you have the judge on one side you have the stenographer that you know dictates everything writes takes note of everything and then you have 
the secretary that works alongside the judge that's handing the judge like papers or whatever you know setting appointments or whatever you know so that's this part and then you have here I, I did a little X right there because that would be Joshua or whoever's in the court right and so what I did was I put the two boxes here one being um, the state's attorney the other one being your judge whether it's your private attorney or your public defender I need to show you your listen if you want to let me show you your judge in the Bible let me show you who your judge is in the Bible this is Hebrews one of my favorite chapters Hebrews chapter 7 verse number hmm, verse number 26 to chapter 8 verse number 2 uh, verse number 6 so this is what it says this is Hebrews chapter 7 verse 26 now this is the this is your lawyer that we're reading about it says for such a high priest would um yeah for such a high priest uh this is again hebrews chapter 7 verse 26 for such a high priest was fitting for us who is holy harmless undefiled separate from sinners and has become higher than the heavens who does not need daily as high priest to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins then for the peoples for this he did once for all when he offered himself for the law appoints as high priests men who have weakness, but the word of the oath which came after the law appoints the son who has been perfected forever. So now let's look at this. It says now this chapter 8 verse 1. Now this is the point the main point of the things we are saying we have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord erected and not man read that again we have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which is erected by the Lord not man so we're looking at the court right the courtroom it says for every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices therefore it is necessary that this one also have something to offer for if, if he were on earth he would not be a priest since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law who serve the copy talking about everything that's on earth everything that you see on earth especially when you go into a courtroom is a copy of what's in heaven it says um for if he were on earth, he would not be a priest since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law, who serve the copy and shadow of the heavenly things as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, see that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But now he obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant which was established on better promises this is your public defender he is our mediator that's what a public defender does he mediates between us and the judge so normally when you go into a courtroom you're standing there pretty much unless the unless the judge understand unless he actually looks at you and speaks directly to you you're standing there and the judge is conversing with your lawyer and the state's attorney and the lawyer is mediating for you between everything that's going on so let's get over here back to Zechariah chapter 3 so he shows me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and standing at his right hand to and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him so is my diagram again if you see if you're in a courtroom and like like pay attention pay attention when you go to stand in that courtroom pay attention to where your lawyer is standing pay attention to where the state's attorney is standing pay attention and here's the deal never ever 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 should your lawyer not be standing in between you and the state's attorney if your lawyer, I'm, I'm about to, to show this to you. I didn't mean like I, I have twice tried to do this video and not delve off into this, but apparently I need to say it. If you are standing before the judge 
and your lawyer is not standing in between you and the state's attorney, whether they stand into your left, whether they stand into your right. If your lawyer is not standing in between you and the state's attorney, them two working together. You better hear me. If your lawyer is not standing in between you and the state's attorney, them two is working together. I'm just saying to you, it's, it's, it's a bogus courtroom. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I don't care who likes it. I, I tried several times to do this video and not put this in here. And so, um, so here it says, he showed me jo Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. Satan was at his right to oppose him. So let's see. This is my right hand aside over here. But the way I got this face, and if you're looking at it, this will probably be your right. But I'm just going to do it like this. So the J is for Jesus or your public defender or your paid attorney. Um, each one, both of them, your paid attorney, your public defender. Um, that's your personal lawyer. And standing in between you and the state's attorney, which ask anybody who <laughs> has had anything to do with courts I know I know like ask anybody who has said anything to do with courts they will always tell you that they will call the state's attorney Satan yeah anyway let's keep going let's keep going that's just something that that anyway Zechariah chapter 3 then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand, a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stand and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and then he answered and spoke to those who uh, stood before him saying, then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him. So this will be the angel of the Lord that they was. So, so he now answers the angel of the Lord. It says he now answers and he speaks to those who are standing before him. And he's saying, take away the filthy garments from him. And to him, he says, so now he's speaking directly to Joshua. And remember, I told you, unless the judge speaks directly to you, the judge is communicating with them and you just basically standing there like looking and seeing what all is going on and like <laughs> praying uh, so it says then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying take away the filthy, filthy garments from him and to him to Joshua he said see I have removed your iniquity from you and will clothe you with rich robes and I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and they put the clothes on him and the angel of the Lord stood by. Now listen, listen, this is why this is so important. In heaven, there is a spiritual courtroom. This, look, everything here on this earth is a copy. So we're given the opportunity to look and see what's happening in heaven. And we're, there's a scripture that talks about how Satan is an accuser of the brethren. And he accuses day and night. But we just got a chance to read in Zechariah chapter 3. How God, how the Lord, the angel of the Lord spoke. You know, it says, the Lord said to Satan... The Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. So, so Satan is constantly condemning us, constantly, constantly beating us over our past, beating us over our sins, beating us over our errors because we are during a time for during a time when we were separated from the Lord during the time when we weren't trying to be obedient to the Lord. He's constantly beating us constantly. And the Lord rebukes Satan. He said, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked out the fire? Listen, you are still alive today. You are looking at this video. You are seeing this video. You are still alive today because of the fact that God kept you. 
God kept you. You are a brand plucked out the fire. You've been through. You went through some trials and God brought you through. He kept you through. But in our minds, see, the thing is, we cannot see these evil spirits that's constantly whispering in our ears and get all this negative stuff. We can't see this stuff. We can't see it, but we hear these thoughts and it's, it, it, it's tormenting. This is a tormenting spirit. It torments and it torments us in our minds based on things in the past, things that, that we're still bound by. This scripture says, this is Zechariah chapter three, verse three. It says, now Joshua clothed with filthy garments. The filthy garments is all the stuff, all the sin, all the stuff that he might have been through, all the stuff that he might have did, stuff that he might have been been through whether you did it or not stuff that you might have been through stuff that might have been done to you not stuff that you might have did but stuff that might have been done to you anyway it go any anyhow any which way is written these are filthy garments on us and he's standing before the lord in these filthy garments and the lord says take it away take the filthy garments from him take it he's and here's the thing the Lord didn't say to Joshua, take it off. The Lord commanded those who were standing before him with Joshua. He ain't even talking to Joshua. He's talking to those standing before him. He says, take it off of him. Take it. Take it off of him. They have to do it. Take it off of him. Listen, let me let me flip over here to Isaiah real quick. This is Isaiah chapter one. It's one of my favorite scriptures. It's, um, for real, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Isaiah chapter one, verse 16. It says, no, verse 18. It says, come now. And I'm starting verse 16. I called it. I'm going to start at verse 16. It says, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, fatherless plea for the widow. I'm going to read that again because I think I read it too fast. And I want to make sure you hear it. Wash yourselves. How do we wash ourselves? Y'all know if we're dirty, we'll go get in the shower and we'll take a shower, right? Well, here's the other way we wash ourselves. Get in the word of God. Read, pray, read, repent. We're washing ourselves. Repent. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. In other words, let me pray. Let me repent of this before the Lord. Whatever. Let me let me just lay it all down before the Lord. Even if I'm crying and boohoo tears, let me lay it down before the Lord. It says, put away the evil of your doings. That means I'm not going to do these things no more. Whatever it is. It's, it's done. It's a wrap. I'm done with it. I'm, I'm done. I'm not doing that. That is not who I am. It says, put away the evil of your doings before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Again, cease. Stop. Stop. It's been a wrap. Stop. I'm not doing that no more. It says, learn to do good. You're not going to automatically do it. You got to learn. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Seek that you're looking for. Seek justice. Go look up the definition of justice. Go look it up. Rebuke the oppressor. That means somebody is oppressing me. Somebody's constantly in my ear. You know, whether, listen, whether it is a flesh and blood being in my ear or whether it is the enemy that I can't see, the enemy in of me that's constantly in my ear, thoughts, you know, coming up, which we see, because I showed you spiritual, we're going back to this Zechariah, I showed you that this is a spiritual war and it's happening in heaven. And so we can't always see, but those Thoughts do not be your thoughts. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's why I'm showing you Zechariah. These don't be your thoughts. So it says rebuke the oppressor. Whatever it is that is oppressing me. Whatever it is that is weighing me down. Rebuke that. Well, you know how to rebuke, right? You know how to tell a person no. No. Get out. Look. Get out. Close the door. Behind. Let me help you to the door. <laughs> out. I'm done. It's over. You know. Uh, rebuke it says shut to shut it down basically rebuke the oppressor defend the fatherless you're standing up now for what you see is right standing up for people who can't stand up for themselves the fatherless defend the fatherless plead for the widow 
here we go verse 18 which is why i came over to isaiah chapter one to begin with come now this is the lord speaking he says come now let us reason together let's talk about this let's just talk about it he says says the lord it says though your sins are like scarlet Though you you got a lot of sins, you you filthy, you dirty. Though your sins is like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. God God is able to do that. It says though they are like red, I mean though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, if you are willing, like like if you really want, if you really listen, have you ever been tired of being tired? Have you ever been tired of just bumping your head? Bumping your head, doing the same thing, hope thinking you're going to get a different result, but you're still getting the same result. Have you ever been tired of being tired? Have you ever been done with an issue? Have you ever like, just like, I'm done. I'm through. I, I just need, I, I need a change. I need deliverance. I need freedom. <laughs> I need to be set free. I need to be forgiven. I need... It says, if you are willing and obedient, willing, you got to want it. You got to want it. Listen, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So the horse that's being led to water, you can lead them there. But unless they are willing to put their head down and drink that water, unless they want to have this fresh water, unless they want, you can't make them. So he's saying, if you're willing. He's not going to force us. We have to be willing. We have to want this if we're willing and obedient. He's going to tell us what to do. We need to do what he tells us to do. It says, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. God is able to cleanse us. It doesn't matter how um, dirty we are it says though your sins is like scarlet like red stained red it says it should be white as snow it says though they are like red like crimson they should be like wool he's, he's telling us this so here in Zechariah chapter 3 the Lord is speaking to those who are standing who are there in front of him with Joshua who is standing before him full of full of just dirty <laughs> just dirty filthy garments it says filthy garments and, and the filthy garments can be anything it doesn't matter what it is because listen there's nothing impossible for God God cannot fail in any area there is nothing impossible so there is nothing that you have went through nothing that has happened to you that God cannot cleanse you from or deliver you from it's just like look He's all powerful. He is God. Like for real God. We're not talking religion. We're talking this is real. <laughs> this, I'm sorry. I just don't know any other way to say it. It says he told, he spoke to those. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before them. Him, Zechariah chapter three. Please look at this. It says, take away the filth, the garments from him. And to him, he says, so now after he's given them instruction and they are going to do what he says do after he's done that. He is now talking directly to Joshua. And he says, look, just like a judge sitting on a bench when he gets through giving instructions. And now he's going to talk directly to you who standing before him. And he says, look, see, I have removed your iniquity from you and I will clothe you in rich robes now you know what you know you know what you know you know all that you've been through you you know you listen you know what you know and to have the filth removed from off of you completely to have the accuser, Satan, state's attorney, to have the accuser shut down and shut up. The Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you. To have him shut up and say, I chose this one. This one was pulled out. 
this he said he's a brand plucked out of the fire. Shut up. I don't even want to hear it. Take those dirty clothes off of him. And and so Zachariah says, because like the clothes are taken off, but he still has this this turban on his head, right? So so here's the thing, and this oh gosh, this is this is the thing. God has delivered us from a lot of stuff. We still here. God has brought us through. He has kept us. We're a brand plucked out of the fire. We are. All of us. I don't know what your relationship with God is. I don't know whether or not you have a relationship with Jesus. But I'm talking to you too. Even if you don't. Although at the beginning of this I said. I'm talking directly to the believers in, in Jesus Christ. And the reason why I'm talking to them is because there's a lot of believers who are still being burdened. There's a lot of believers who are still under all types of oppression that they should not be under. But here's the deal. I'm talking to you too. And I'm about to prove to you whether you have a relationship with God or not at this moment why I'm talking to you. I'm back. Hey, I hope that you're understanding everything that I'm sharing with you so far. Far, I want to emphasize at this moment that it is time to be healed and set free from past traumas, from the burden that we carry in our heart, as well as from the mental burden and emotional burden that we carry even in our thoughts, the, the oppression that we have in our thoughts. It's time to be healed and set free from that. But this healing and this um, being set free is not just for the believer. It's not just for the believer. And that is what I want to show you now. Jesus did not come for the healthy. He came for the sick. He came for the sinner. That the sinner can be brought to repentance that they can turn around and receive this freedom and this healing that can only come through him and I want to show that to you now I'm about to prove that to you but give me a moment because I'm, I'm coming there so stick, stick with me now this man, his, his dirty clothes has been taken. The sins have been forgiven. He has been washed as clean as snow Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 through 20 I think it was 18 19 20 21 go read it but he still had this turban on his head this dirty turban on his head so Zachariah who's being shown all this Zachariah says this is verse 5 and I said let them put a clean turban on his head a clean turban do you know what that means it says so they put a clean turban on his head and they put the clothes on him and the angel of the Lord stood by when they took the dirty turban off his head and put the clean turban on his head that is the removal of all the negative thoughts that is the removal of all that depression that is the removal of all that grief that is the removal of all that negativity that is removal of see we don't want to give the, the the devil a stone to stand on that's what the scriptures say right don't give him a footstool to stand on a footstool, I think it says, to stand on. We're not going to look. They completely cleaned Joshua up. They removed the dirty clothes. But let's remove the turban too. In other words, this, this, all this yapping at the ear. Satan, shut up. The Lord said, you are rebuked. Stop talking to me. Y'all know, y'all know how we do when we get mad. We be like, stop talking to me. I'm, I'm not trying to hear. Don't talk to me. Stop. Stop. When, and, and that's what, what did I just read it? It said, um, to the oppressor, the oppressor rebuked the, that, that was, I had to think about it. That was Isaiah chapter one, verse 16, verse 17. Let me go back and, and go look at this again. Cause it said rebuke the oppressor. We have to know where this oppression is coming from. And when you recognize where this oppression is coming from, the Lord says that we can rebuke it. This is verse 17. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. That's why I'm giving you these scriptures. That's why you need to see these scriptures. Because when all that whispering start happening in your in your ears and all that, uh-uh. Um, excuse me. Stop talking to me. Stop talking to me. I'm not listening. 
don't even talk. Get out. As a matter of fact, get out. Get out. You're not welcome here. And here's the reason why. The Lord rebuked you already. Shut up. Why are you even speaking? The Lord rebuked you. They, they, they put a clean turban on my head. I am free. I am delivered. Let me show you why. Oh, let me keep going. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. <laughs> this is uh, Zechariah. We're back in Zechariah chapter 6. So, so while, while Joshua is being cleansed, because Joshua is standing there. Look, Joshua is standing there. And this is being removed. This is being removed. It says, Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua. Now, here is where the angel of the Lord is now speaking to Joshua, directly to Joshua. Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you walk in my ways, and if you keep my command, then you shall also judge my house, and likewise have charge of my courts. I will give you places to walk among those who stand here. Hear, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua. Upon the stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts. And I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, says the Lord, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. Listen, Joshua's being told, I've done this. I cleaned you up. I removed this burden off of you. It's, it's gone. Not, it's gone. I did this. Now, all you got to do to keep it, walk in my ways, keep my commandments. And then this is all the blessings that I'm about to give you for doing it. I'm going to give you a place. I'm going to give you a position. You're going to be able to stand among others who stand. Listen, I'm a living testimony. I'm a living testimony. I'm Joshua. If you're watching this and you've gotten this far, you're Joshua. God is able. He's able to clean you up and clean your life, clean your garments. He's able to remove the turban off your head, all that negativity. God is able. All you have to do is walk with him. Satan can't say nothing to you. Satan cannot say nothing to you. He cannot pull up your past. He cannot say nothing to you. That's not who you are. That stuff that you went through. That's why your trials become and your tests become your testimonies. It's not who you are. It's stuff that has happened. Things that has happened in this rotten world that we live in. But all that is being removed off of you. I said initially when I started this video that I was talking to those who are believers. But let me show you now that I'm talking to all of you. Whether you have believed in Jesus or whether this is your first time, whether you do believe in Jesus or whether this is your first time even hearing about anything. Because because here's the thing. Because Religion has given God a bad rap. Religion has lied about a lot of stuff. And I'm not presenting to you religion. I'm presenting to you the Lord Jesus who wants to do this for you. So let me show you this. This is Luke chapter 5. I'm going to start here. This is Luke chapter 5. Now I'm now talking to those who do not have that personal relationship with King Jesus just yet. When King Jesus was here on this earth. Different ones was coming to him to be healed. When they found out that he was healing and delivering, different ones, it says, um, this is verse chapter 5, this is verse 31, 31, 2, and 32, two verses. Jesus said, Those who have, I mean, Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well 
have no need of a physician. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So now all of this that I showed you can be yours because King Jesus did not come for those who are well. He came for those who are sick. He came for those who are going through. He came for those who are burdened and heavy laden. As a matter of fact, oh, I don't want to get before. Um, do I? Mm, I want to get before my, I don't want to rush ahead of myself. It says again, Jesus answered and said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So Joshua standing before the angel of the Lord, standing in this courtroom before the angel of the Lord. How do we know he was sick? Because he had on filthy garments. That's how we know he was sick. And that was removed from him. Even the turban was removed from him. He says, I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Um, I'm looking on my wall because on my wall, one of the things I keep on the see. Okay, this is the covenant. Now, a lot of times you'll hear people saying, I'm not under, we're not under the old covenant, da, 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 da. There are some people who are still under the old covenant. There are some people who are still under bondages of different types. And so the old covenant, under the old covenant, Jesus is saying to you, he's, he's coming to you who are still under some type of bondage. And he's saying, I will, number one, I'm going to bring you out from under that yoke. He said, I'm going to bring you out from under that yoke. He says, and, and the yoke, um, back when he was talking to the Israelites, it was Egypt. They were slaveries. They were under slavery to Egypt. And so the yoke was a bondage. Whatever it is, is, but it's whatever enslaves you, including sin, whatever enslaves you, whatever that bondage is, whether it's emotional, whether it's uh, mental, whether it's physical, um, spiritual he says i'm gonna bring you out from under that yoke that bondage i'm gonna free you from being a slave so bringing you out from under the yoke that would be like taking the filthy garments out freeing you from being a slave that's taking that turban off i'm gonna free you from that because see some people were um brought out as a matter of fact I'm, i can't even say some people um, in Egypt, a lot of those who came out of Egypt, those Israelites who came out of Egypt, they ended up dying in the wilderness. And the reason why is because even though they were brought out from under the yoke, they were still mentally a slave. So it had they they needed to be cleansed mentally or have that turban taken off their head as well as having the garment of slavery taken off. So he says, I'm going to bring you out from under the yoke. I'm going to free you from being a slave. He says, I'm going to redeem you with an outstretched arm and mighty acts of judgment. He says, I'm going to take you to be my own and I will be your God. Now, all you have to do, because let me tell you something about, let me, oh, let me, I got this on me for this one. I just recently shared a video on my YouTube page about monumental covenants, monumental covenants. And what I learned and what I shared is this, God will establish a covenant with you and he will maintain that covenant and the only thing you got to do is show up i'm gonna say it again god will establish a covenant with you and he will maintain it and all you got to do is show up so let's look at this he's establishing a covenant with you he's saying to you i'm gonna bring you out whatever is binding you all you got to do is be willing and obedient that's what it said in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. All you have to do is be willing and obedient. He says, I'm going to bring you out of this bondage, whatever it is. I'm going to free you from being a slave. In other words, I'm going to cleanse your man too. I'm going to remove that turban off of your head too. He says, I'm going to redeem you with an outstretched arm. He's reaching for you. He's reaching for you and mighty acts of judgment. I'm taking you as my own and I will be your God. And all you have to do is be willing. All you got to do is show up. All you have to do is show up. That's it. Show up.
that's it receive it you receive it then the new covenant kicks in let's see like the raises above where you can see the new covenant the new covenant he says he will put his law on your mind and write it on your heart the, the third part of it which you can't see <laughs> is that he would take you no what the third part is that he will be your god and he will take you as his own hold on y'all Hold on, I need to go over there because you need to see this. I, I I need you to see this. When I tell you, you see it's on my wall. I ain't playing. I'm holding on to this stuff. I'm holding on to it for dear life because I believe. I believe it and I'm a living witness. My life, my testimony is a living witness to this. So here, so the new covenant, once you have received, once you, 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 um, uh, are willing to receive this you then come under the new covenant because it's already been ratified by jesus blood so once you say yes to jesus you're you're dealing with this once you say yes to jesus yes jesus i i want this i need to be brought out from under the bondage that i'm under i need to be freed from being a slave i need you to redeem me i need you to do this for me i need you and it, once you say yes to jesus you come under the new covenant he's putting his law in your mind and writing it on your heart it says he will be your god and you'll be his people He'll forgive you for your wickedness. That's Isaiah. We looked at that and remember your sins no more. Isaiah, we looked at that in chapter one where he said that um, even though our sins are like scarlet, they'll be white as snow. He says he'll remember our sins no more. Hey, I want to interject again um, as I'm preparing this video literally i'm literally preparing the video so that i could present the video to you and in the process of it i'm talking to the lord and, and it occurred to me there's a part where i show you and where i uh insert this it'll probably be right at that part where i'm showing on what's on my wall which is the old covenant and the new covenant the old covenant and the new covenant and it occurred to me because this message that i'm sharing i want this message to reach everybody i want this message see initially when i thought i was sharing this message i thought that i was sharing it for those who believe in king jesus but i realized see when i had to go back when king jesus sent me i think it's to in luke or it's either in Matthew where he said, um, is it in Luke or is it in Matthew? It, you'll see it. <laughs> but he said that I did not come for the righteous. I came for the sinner. He said, I, I'm not coming for those who are healthy. They don't need a doctor. It's the sick who need a doctor, right? And so here's the thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like the sinner. Those who have not yet received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they haven't yet received. You're not even at the covenant. You're not even at the old company because you haven't even received Jesus as your savior. No doubt you've been put off by religion. You don't want nothing to do with religion. And I'm not even presenting to you religion. I'm not presenting to you religion. I'm presenting to you King Jesus. King Jesus is not really. Look, King Jesus didn't even want to have anything to do with those Pharisees. He called those Pharisees out in chapter 23 of Matthew. He called them hypocrites. He said, you're blind guides. I'm not presenting to you religion. I'm presenting to you King Jesus and before I realize before you can even get to the new covenant you have to get the old covenant even before you can get to the new covenant and so I realize there are people who are going through bondages people who are in the world people who are not even hearing about King Jesus Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that's what the Apostle Paul was saying. Um, the video, I, I shared the video. It's on, my, <laughs> it's, I, I, it's on my site. but And it's one that I recently did where I was sharing how the Apostle Paul, he was talking about foundations and building. And he said that his goal, his, his um, 
purpose, his plan was not even to build on a foundation that somebody else has already laid. He's looking to reach people who don't even yet know about King Jesus. He's looking to lay a foundation there. And he says he, he knows that there are people that is building on his foundation. He, he gets that. But the foundation that he's trying to lay is one where people don't even know King Jesus. He's trying to get the gospel to them. And this is what I am trying to get to you in sharing this video with Zachariah for you to understand the bondage, the struggle that you're under. You don't have to be under at all, at all. Because the old covenant, King Jesus is saying to you, he's saying to you, I want to deliver you from this. He says, I want to bring you out from under the, you had to look up. <laughs> he says, I want to bring you out from under the yoke, from under that bondage. He, he says, I want to bring you out of that. I want to get that off of you. Let me take that off of you. That's what he's saying. He says, I want to bring you out of it. He says, I want to free you from being a slave, even in your mind, not just taking it out of your heart, but taking it off of your mind. I want to free you from being a slave. He says, with outstretched arms, I am trying to redeem you. I'm trying to pull you. I'm reaching for you. All you got to do. Listen, I did a video where I shared that God establishes. He, 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 um, he establishes a covenant with us. So he established the covenant and he maintains it. All we got to do is show up. So I'm sharing this so that you can show up and receive. Listen, if there was a sale, a really good sale going on at a store, I would be on here telling you, listen, there is a sale going on right now. There's, there's a really good sale. You need to go get it. So this is something that is really, 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 really good. This is your freedom. This is your deliverance. This is not nothing temporary. This is a permanent. See, see, I'm not presenting religion at all. I'm presenting to you the word of God. I'm not presenting you to you a temporary fix. I am presenting to you where Jesus, everybody that he touched, everybody that he healed was made whole. This was not a temporary thing. So he says that he wants to do this. He wants to break this bondage off of us. He wants to clean these filthy garments off of us. It's bondage. He wants to completely take it off of us. He says that he wants to um, free us from being slaves. That's cleaning our minds. He said, he says that he wants to redeem us with an outstretched arm and mighty acts of judgment. Mighty acts of judgment. That way we know that we know that we know that we know that it's him. Mighty acts of judgment. He says that we will be his and he'll be our God. And when we really get it and when we understand it, not the religion, Straight relationship with King Jesus. Straight looking to King Jesus. Lifting our eyes unto the hills from whence come our help. Straight looking at King Jesus. Nothing else will do. No empty cisterns, broken cisterns. <laughs> we want fresh water. Fresh oil. Straight King Jesus. When we really get it. And we say yes to that. We're willing and obedient. That immediately puts us under the new covenant because he already did everything for us. He's already established it. He's already maintaining it. All we got to do is show up. And so when we can see what he has established and maintains, which is the old covenant, and we show up willing, we come immediately under the new covenant. When we show up willing and obedient to King Jesus. He says, I will put my, my law in your mind and on your heart. I'm not going to write it on tablets. I'm going to write it on you, your mind, and your heart. He says, I will be your God and you will be mine. He says, I forgive you of your wickedness and remember your sins no more. 
He put our sins as far as the east is from the west. There's, there's, you know, there's no poles. I, I recently learned this. The north and the south has poles. They have stopping points, poles. But the east and the west, there's no east pole and no west pole. So he says he will put our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. That's a continuum. Continuous. I just wanted to share that with y'all. Because I realized that initially when I said and I was pointing you to the old covenant and I was showing the old covenant. Ah, so thank you, Lord. This video here will go after that part. You'll see it after. So you when I initially said that, when I initially said that, my thoughts was for those who didn't know Jesus. But I what I wasn't realizing is that if you don't know him, you won't even know about the covenant. So I gotta show you the covenant first. Okay, so, all right, so listen, I had to sit before the Lord to figure out whether or not this video is going to go before or after. But either way, you're getting ready to see <laughs> what I show you. Either you have already saw what I showed you or you're getting ready to see it. But I just wanted to make that clarification. Okay, bye. That's what King Jesus wants to do for you. And here's the thing. All you got to do is show up. And, and, and showing up, check this out. That doesn't mean you have to go into a brick and mortar church building. That's not what that means. That's not what showing up means. Showing up means all you have to do is say yes to King Jesus. Yes. I, I'm tired of bumping my head. I'm tired of bumping my head. I'm tired of being under this bondage. I'm tired of suffering. I'm tired of being tormented in my thoughts. I'm tired of being oppressed. Check this out. So when you say yes to Jesus. Oh, I got one more scripture for you. I got one more. I got one more. This is Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. This is what King Jesus says to you. Matthew chapter 11. I feel like crying. I feel like shouting, but I feel like crying at the same time. Matthew chapter 11. This is verse 28. King Jesus says, it's written in red. You know what? Let me help you like this. You got to lay your eyes on it. You got to see it. Written in red. King Jesus says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus said, Come. He says, Come. Come to him. Come to him wherever you are. Come to Jesus. Whatever you're going through, come to Jesus and give it to him. Tell Jesus, I need you to take this. I need you to take it. I need you to do it for me. Like you did it for Joshua. Do it for me. As a matter of fact, I want you to see these. It's important that you see these scriptures. So here. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying, take away the filthy garments from him. And to him, he said, see, I have removed your iniquity from you and I will clothe you with rich robes. And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and they put the clothes on him and the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, if you walk in my ways and if you keep my command, then you should also judge my house and likewise have charge of my courts. And I will give you a place to walk among those who stand here. I'm going to stop there, although it continues over to verse number 10. You can read that later. Um, Isaiah, I want you to see this because we read this already, but I want you to see it because it's nothing like putting your eyeballs on the words <laughs> yourself. This is Isaiah chapter 18, I mean, chapter 1, 
verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they should be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they should be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you should eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you should be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. That's Isaiah. God is able to do it. He is able to do it. He is able to do it. It doesn't matter what the issue is. This is Luke, book of Luke. Chapter 5, verse number 31. Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus came for the sinners. He's still reaching for the sinners with an outstretched arm, it says. I'll redeem you with an outstretched arm. Arm. He is reaching for the sinners to call them to repentance. Um, Matthew 11, 28 and 20. I just want y'all to see these verses. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Right here. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, for you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's all the scriptures. That's it. Like I literally showed them all to you. Now all you got to do is want it. Be willing. That was the first thing. You got to be willing. That's what it said in Isaiah. We read it. I showed it to you. We read it. If you are willing. So I don't know about y'all, but... I'm willing like I have been willing I have been willing and the whole purpose of me doing all these videos and sharing with y'all my personal studies is because the Lord cleaned me up he cleaned me up I am Joshua I had on dirty robes and I had a filthy turban and the Lord cleaned me up he washed me white as snow there was still some things there. And so I stayed before the Lord so he could continue to wash me. And as he's showing me all this stuff and as he's doing it for me, I'm sharing this so that you can see this because what he's doing for me, he could do for you too. He's no respect of persons. He didn't come for the righteous. He came for the sinner to lead them to repentance. When Jesus came for me, I was not righteous. <laughs> when Jesus came for me, I wasn't even looking for Jesus. Like I, I didn't want nobody to talk to me about the Bible because I was steeped in religion. So I had a, um, I was programmed in religion and I didn't want to hear none of that. And Jesus drew me to himself. He loved me to himself. He cleansed, he cleansed me up. He dug deep. He, he, and, and there's still, as I stay before the Lord, there's still stuff that is coming up. And the reason why stuff is still coming up for me is because when you purge, when you purify silver, when you purify gold, there's a lot of stuff like it, it's a process. So I have been taken from and growing from faith to faith. It's a process. So stuff is still come up. And as it comes up, he skims it off. Like, look, I literally had to go and study the process of purifying silver, purifying gold. And what's so crazy about it is my Malachi studies that I'm now going to be able to get into <laughs> and look at and, and continue my studies with. My Malachi studies have been about King Jesus sitting as a purifier and a refiner. He's sitting as a refiner's fire and a launderer's soap because what happens is when you begin to understand the purpose of, the benefit from being cleansed, the freedom that comes from being clean. When you begin to understand it, you want more. Mm, clean me some more. <laughs> you want more. When we're living in this world that we're living in, it's easy to get dirty. It's easy to get sullied again. So you know the been Listen, give it to you in the natural. Let me give it to you in the natural. That's what I heard. Every day, 
we get up and we take showers and we get dressed before we go out and then when we get through going out in the world and doing whatever we're doing in the world going to our job or whatever and we come home we want to refresh for that so we could be fresh and so we could like have our mind we get in the shower and we wash we're doing that to the outside but this is a spiritual cleansing that needs to happen too and it happens on the inside and so once we get this, once we understand what King Jesus is doing, he washes us that first time. He removes all that stuff from us the first time. And then he tells us to just stay, continue to walk with him. Continue to walk with him. Continue to wash. He'll help us. We're going to come into contact with stuff. We're going to have to say uh -uh, some, th some things, things that we used to do. You know, we're going to have to say, no, nah, that's not beneficial to me. That's, that's no longer beneficial to me. I can't even hang that way. I can't even do those things. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like God Almighty, I just had to. <laughs> you just don't understand. Like, like when you know what you know, when you know what you know, and when you realize all that God has brought you from and brought you through, a lot of times we walk around here thinking we're doing this, and we go through the motions of doing church services, you know, because we're thinking we're doing this, but. Mm -mm. Baby, no, no, the Lord is pulling us out. He's drawing us. He's pulling us out. And there's things that has to be broken off of us. So sometimes we're going to go through this breaking. But when we go through this breaking, we need to get before the Lord with the breaking and just let him do what he's doing because he is fixing us and he's cleansing us. And sometimes like, listen, we got a garden in the back and sometimes you have to break up the hardened ground before you can even move dirt out the way so you can plant there's so many different ways that God is trying to tell us in his word what he's trying to do for us he's trying to bring us out and this world is steady trying to grip us with a bunch of junk this world is steady trying to grip us but let me tell you you got a door to your house that you can close you got a door in the bedroom bathrooms you got doors and you are able to open these doors and close these doors you have a phone that you can either answer or not answer you have a computer that you can either log on or not log on in other words you have a choice and you can say no God's word says let your no mean no and your yes mean yes so we have to be mindful of what we're saying yes to and what we're saying no to we got to be mindful of these things you cut out the bad, but you don't want to cut out the good. So there's even a scripture in the Bible that talks about some planting that was done. And, and the disciples, they had planted, you know, Jesus had planted. And then overnight, an enemy came in and sold some wheat. And the next day they came and they saw this, these weeds among with the good seed. And the disciples said, should we go in and pluck them out? You know, and Jesus said, mm -mm. he said, let it grow up together. And the reason why, and I had to learn, listen, that is so true because, again, we got a garden outside, right? I had to learn that when they first come up, the weeds and the good plants look exactly alike. So you got to let it grow so that it, when it's time, you separate the weeds from the good. So he's teaching us how to discern between what's good and what's not good and he's telling us that we can say no to what is not good and what is not beneficial for us we can close doors we can not answer phones we can not log on to the computer we can choose what we're going to intake through our eyes and through our ears and what we're not going to intake but one thing that needs to be clear 
he when you when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior he's giving you clean clothes that old you comes off you are not your past you are not what other people have done to you or said to you you are not none of that stuff is gone he has removed it you are a new creature in Christ you start from this day and go forward and them thoughts that turban is taken off too and you're given a clean turban so when people try to come at your uh, 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 net shut it down I ain't trying to hear that that's wicked that's not correct that's wrong thought that that doesn't align with God's word I'm trying to hear it no I hope this blessed you I'm expecting I'm expecting your freedom I'm expecting your freedom I want it as much as you probably you probably want to know what I mean. I, I, I'm expecting your freedom. I'm expecting. I'm expecting the freedom of everybody that's connected to me in any type of way. That's why I'm sharing these scriptures. I'm not holding this stuff back to you. I'm back from you. I'm not keeping you from seeing any of this stuff. Any of it is in God's word. You need to see it. You need to see it. Now listen. You might come across some people who will be able to explain it a lot better than me. So forgive me if I like kind of was bouncing all over the place. Forgive me for those things. You know, I'm still in this world. I'm still got some imperfections. I, I'm not perfect. <laughs> but you will not be able to say that I did not show this to you. This is the joy that I have. This is the freedom that I have. It's, it feels good to have clean garments it feels good to have a clean turban it feels good to be reminded when all them negative thoughts come up that I can say uh-uh no that's not mine mm -mm, no I'm about to take this to King Jesus mm -hmm. that's what we about to do let's go let's go see the Lord on this mm-hmm and if it's something that I did, oh, let me hurry up and go. Let me, I need to be, I need to be laundered. <laughs> I need to be washed. Cause again, been in this world and being imperfect in this world, we will make mistakes. We're not perfect. But when we make those mistakes, let's go to the laundromat. I need to be laundered. I need to be washed. King Jesus, I need your help. <laughs> it's real. I love y'all. I really do. I gotta go. Bye. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed that video that I just shared. Um, that this video here, I, I don't know. I think I kind of said about all of my videos with the Lord be sharing with me stuff, He be showing me and sharing with me, and I'll be sharing it with you all. I'll be like, That's that's it, that's like the best one. Um, but I want to do something with this video that I have not done with any of my videos. I want to dedicate this video so. My first thing is um, I want to thank the Lord for this information that I just shared with you all from Zechariah chapter 3. I've known this information, but to wake me up today and to put on my heart, this is what I need to share today. This like I still got my Malachi studies on. Like I'm, I'm still in the book of Malachi and still digging and still pulling from that. But he was like, mm -mm, this, and then to show me on top of it why this, like, get to this, this, and make sure it's done and and get this out, like to press this. So I'm literally going to be pressing this video. So I want to thank the Lord first because I have been in prayer to the Lord. I feel like I could share this. I've been in prayer to the Lord in reference to issues, in reference to traumas, in reference to helping um, 
different ones get through traumas. I've been in prayer about it. And I said, I pulled Ezekiel chapter 37. And I said, Lord, like you, you, you did it for Ezekiel. You took him to a valley of dry bones. And you asked him, could these bones live again? And, and Ezekiel gave it to you and said, you know, and you told Ezekiel exactly what to do. You told him exactly what to say. I literally have it right here. Valley of dry bones. Um, it says, the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold, there were very many in an open valley and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, oh Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh dry bones, Hear the word of the Lord. Bam. Number one. He taught like I literally and I still have to dig even further into this because I said to the Lord, just like you told Ezekiel, you told him exactly what to do. You told him exactly what to say. I need your help. I need to know exactly what to do, exactly what to say. Number one, he's telling me prophesy to these bones and say to them oh dry bones hear the word of the lord and so with this video i am praying that you hear go back over it look at this stuff that's why i'm also showing you what the word actually says hear the word of the lord it says oh dry bones hear the word of the lord thus says the lord god to these bones Surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I am prophesying. Now, this is another thing that I don't do. I share my studies. I dig into this, but I don't prophesy. I am sharing what I'm sure, or at least I don't think that that's what I'm doing. Like it's not my intentions, but right here, God is saying to prophesy. In other words, to speak, speak to these dry bones. It says, I, the Lord said he's going to cause breath to enter into you. And he said, you shall live breath. Let me tell you, when you're going through something, when you are going through something, it's hard to breathe. When you're going through something and it's hard and it's intense, you also feel like you don't even want to take that next breath. You don't even want to live. But let me tell you, I'm going to tell you what the Lord said. The Lord God said, oh, dry bones. He, he told me, he said, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And this is what the Lord says. Surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. God is going to give you the strength, the breath his spirit he's going to give you the strength to get through this day and the next day and the day thereafter because he said you shall live in a minute i'm going to tell you why this is important he says i will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you cover you with skin and put breath in you you shall live then you shall know that i am the lord i'm speaking this over all of the dry bones this is what god's words say but we're not done it says verse 7 so i prophesied as i was commanded i am speaking god's word to you i'm showing you god's word i'm showing you i'm telling you i'm doing all these videos and i'm telling y'all what the lord is showing me it says um as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered over, covered them over and there was no, but there was no breath in them. Also, he said to me, see, I'm, I'm looking and I'm digging into this because I need the Lord to tell me what to do because I am in a spiritual war right now and I am fighting a battle right now and I am fighting for people who are um, going through people with who have dry or experiencing dry bones like like brittle dry just brittle brown bones they break easy so for those who are broken for those who are feeling crushed see God's words say that he is near to the brokenhearted and the crushed one he saves but sometimes when we're going through we don't always feel like we can get through and we don't always realize how close God is to us especially if we don't know how to open God's word and so therefore 
Ezekiel is taken into this valley of dry bones and God is telling him what to do. And I am gleaning from that because I need the Lord to help me to speak into some uh, certain situations and so forth. First and foremost, I dedicate all this to the Lord God. Thank you. Thank you. I am so grateful that I am of, for what I was shown in Zechariah. I'm so grateful for what I was told to speak and given to speak. I'm grateful for that. And I'm believing that the dry bones shall because that's what God's words say but even though it says that the flesh came on them it says there was no breath in them so let me keep going it says also he said to me prophesy to the breath prophesy son of man he sees speaking he said it twice prophesy to the breath the breath spirit the breath he says prophesy son of man and say to the breath thus says the lord god come from the four winds O breath and breathe on the slain that they may live so i prophesied as he commanded me and breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet at feet an exceedingly great army listen breath i'ma do it like the lord said do it Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. Come from the four winds, come from the east, come from the south, come from the north, come from the west, and breathe on these slain. Breathe on those who are dry. Breathe on them um, so that they may live. That's what the word says. It says, uh, verse number 11, then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, I'm speaking to you what thus says the Lord. This is Ezekiel chapter 37. It says, verse 12, therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, listen, hear me. Because I believe this. I believe this with everything in me. Behold, O oh my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O oh my people, and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you, yes, Lord, and you shall live, yes, Lord. And I will place you in your own land. Yes, Lord. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and perform it, says the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So first and foremost, I thank God for this video that I just shared. I thank you for this word in Ezekiel of what to say to those who are dry, to believe for them, to speak to them. He says, speak his word prophesy his word not my own word not my own opinion his word and that's what we're sharing i got more though because i have one more dedication something that i have never did with any of my videos but i definitely want to do now okay so this last dedication um for this video again something that i have never ever in none of my videos ever done but i'm doing it this time i'm feeling moved and led to do it this time this last dedication of this video goes to all seven of my children my adult children khalil tatiana jeffrey amber adam mikey and justice i called everybody else's names as it is did not use um nicknames so mikey is the michael i dedicate this video to all of them and to all of my grandchildren all of my grandchildren those who are here and those who might be yet to come on the way i don't want to leave anybody out and to my great grandchildren who are not yet in the works but are in the loins i dedicate this video to all of them you are overcoming your giants you are overcoming your battles i want to share this last part i it, i didn't even know it was going to be a part of this video but i want to reveal and expose to everyone the spirit of amalek see we are today coming out of this we're breaking these bondages we're getting our healing we are getting our deliverance we are being set free from 
past traumas, any past trauma. So I want to reveal to you Amalek. Amalek is a spirit. Today we're dealing with the spirit of Amalek, but back then Amalek actually did exist. Amalek was the son or grandson of Esau, brother, twin brother of Jacob. So he is related to the Israelites. But I want to show you this. I want to show you this um the victory. But before I do that, let me tell you what Amalek represents. Amalek back when he actually existed on the face of the earth and even as a spirit he was all about the genocide of the people of God Amalek was all for the genocide of the people of God he was a I'm thinking if I could say it I'm gonna say it he was a punk <laughs> I say it that way I'm gonna say it that way he was a punk he went after the weak and the weary he went after the weak to attack and slaughter them and the weary to attack them. And I want to show you this. I want to show you Amalek and I want you to understand what you're battling. And then I want to let you know, all of you, I'm speaking to all of you, anybody who is weak, and not weak, anybody who is tired, anybody who is battling again, because we're talking about being set free being healed and being delivered from past traumas it is weakening your heart it is like like um oh what's the word i just used the word earlier in the video um it's tormenting it's a tormenting spirit but here's the thing about these evil spirits they cannot inhabit your body unless you allow them to. And for a lot of people, a lot of people did not know how to fight against these things. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about um, this guy that had legions on him. A bunch of demons that was on them things was trying to kill him. People tried to bind him up, but they couldn't. He would break free from all the chains and binds that they would put on him. him. But when Jesus came through. This man, this this man with these legions on him ran up to King Jesus and the legions is what spoke. But let me tell you something. When he got through with King Jesus, King Jesus cast them legions out of this man. You will never know the name of the man. You would never know his name. But one thing you will know about him is he was healed. He was set free and he was delivered. And those tormenting spirits that was on him the legions that was on him was cast out into the swine and the swine couldn't handle it so the swine went over the precipice it couldn't handle it this man was fighting trying to hang on and here comes king jesus and he runs up to king jesus and jesus says what is your name and the thing speaks it says we are legions because there are many of us tormenting this man but King Jesus. Now here's the other thing. King Jesus said about us, his disciples, his, his followers. He said that we would do the works that he did. And he said greater works would, he, would we do. We would do what he did. He cast them legions out. Them legions had to go. And so for us, I feel like a part of well, one of the reasons. Because number one, King Jesus is the one that's doing it. He says that to those who believe. I'm a believer. He says to those who believe. He will back us up from heaven with signs, miracles, and wonders. And he talks about in Matthew chapter 16. The things that we will be able to do in his name. But here's the thing. We're speaking it. We're believing it. We're speaking it. King Jesus is doing it. So, um, and Ezekiel told us to speak, to prophesy, or to say what thus says the Lord. And so I'm telling you what's in the word of God. That's what I'm doing. I'm telling you what's in the word of God. So, um, like I said, these spirits, they could not kill this man. That man with the legions, they could not kill him. Period, point blank. Jesus set him free period point blank those legions what they did get to go into it went over the prefaces it killed them so this I'm looking at a spirit of Amalekite a spirit of Amalekite that is a suicidal spirit a spirit of Amalekite now somebody might tell you different I just know what I'm seeing in God's word 
I just know what I'm seeing in God's word. It is a suicidal um, spirit. It attacks those who are weak and weary to kill them. But here's the thing. Spirits cannot kill us. They cannot kill us. So they try to get us to do it to ourselves through our thoughts, through these tormenting thoughts, which is why it was so important for you to see Joshua in um, the book of Zechariah chapter 3. It was very important for you to see that because not only did King Jesus shut Satan up, not only did the Lord say the Lord rebuke you, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. He said, look, look, not only did he say that. Not only did he clean all the filthy garments off of Joshua, but he also removed that turban, that dirt from off of over his head. In other words, your mind is being set free too. Now I want you to see the battle. This is, make sure my glasses are clean. I just <laughs> rubbed it and rubbed it and rubbed it. So I want, I want you to see this. Um, first, I want you to see the ugliness of Amalek. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 25. Deuteronomy chapter 25. It is verse number 17 through 19. It says, remember what Amalek did to you on the way as you were coming out of Egypt. We're actually about to read that. It's in Exodus. Um, so I'm going to read this and then I'm going to go back and then I'll probably read this again. It says, remember what Amalek did to you on the way as you were coming out of Egypt. How he met you on the way and attacked your rear ranks. All the stragglers at your rear when you were tired and weary and he did not fear God. Therefore, it shall be. When the Lord your God has given you rest from your enemies all around in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess as an inheritance, that you will blot out the remembrance of Amalekic, Amalek from under heaven, you shall not forget. Let's go over to um, Exodus chapter 17 verse 8 through 16. And this is why I am dedicating this video to my children. Um, so this is, and this is something that I hold on to for my children. Now I'm trying to contain myself so I don't cry. <laughs> but this is a scripture that I hold on to for my children. And this is why I keep doing these videos and will keep doing these videos. And this is why I am, there's a scripture that says one will chase a thousand, two will chase 10,000, right? So my my battle has been since the Lord has been with me and teaching me this spiritual warfare. This is why I have a whole website dedicated to training in spiritual warfare, training how to fight. I got to make sure I upload this video over there too. Now that I think about it, because I'm uploading this video and sharing this video everywhere. It is time for us to be healed and set free. King Jesus said it. I believe it. I believe it enough for you. I I have strong faith, I believe, for you. Um, I'm believing it. I need you to believe it because <laughs> because um, your faith, you're healed by your faith. But I, I have that faith, too, because I remember when that man was on that cot and those four had to lower him down before Jesus. And Jesus looked at the man and the first thing he said, he saw their faith. It says he saw their faith. And he told this man, your sins have been forgiven. This man should have got up. But, you know, it was a bunch of people around him with all that talk. So Jesus had to shut them down. And then he told the man, get up, pick up your cot and walk. It's a wrap. He's cleaning you. He's cleaning us. He's healing us now. He is healing us now. He is healing us now. And we need to take it. We need to reach out and take it. He's handing it to you. But if you don't reach out and grab it for yourself. So. This is, um, because I keep going and I don't want to do that. <laughs> this is Exodus chapter 17. It's verse 8 through 16. This is what it says. Now, Amalek, and I just told you, he's a murderous spirit. He wanted to annihilate the Israelites, the people of God. He um, is one that tries to commit genocide, try to just wipe everything. So he said, it says, now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, choose us some men and go out 
fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod. Tell y'all I ain't playing. <laughs> I, I am not playing. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm not playing. I'm not playing. Like I always do. Say, look, I use visuals <laughs> just so that I can see this. So, because God says, as far as you can see it, you can believe it. So it's just visuals for me. It was that was actually a gift that was given to me a long time ago, but um, it has a lot of meaning for me, and I'm grateful to the person that gave it to me too. So anyway, because um, it's two of them, and I have the shorter version. There was a bigger one. Anyway, he says. This is Moses speaking. He said, tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and her, H-U-R, her, he's um, from the tribe of Judah. Uh, his father was Jephunneh, I think. But anyway, it says, and her went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let his hand down, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hand became heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. And when it says, and Aaron and her supported his hands one on one side and the other on the other side and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun so Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword then the Lord said to Moses write this for a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called its name, The Lord is my banner, or Jehovah Nisi. It says, For he said, Because the Lord has sworn, the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So here we are. We're in another generation, and Amalek is still keeping up stuff. Amalek is still trying to destroy. Amalek is still causing people to commit suicide. Amalek is still doing this stuff. And the problem is that we, as the, the the disciples of Jesus Christ, we should have had the power to step in and to say no. But in operating in our own strength, we have been like those powerless disciples who couldn't even heal that boy that was having the seizures. Well, let me tell y'all. Let me tell you. I ain't doing that today. Tired of bumping my head, y'all. Tired of being tired. I believe God's word. And I know that as long as I keep my hands lifted, as long as I stay in the presence of the Lord, as long as I keep walking with the Lord to the best of my ability and where I fail, the Lord is helping me. The Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> he is helping me. I know that my children will beat and defeat their Amaleks. I'm calling you out, Amalek. That spirit of suicide, that genocidal spirit, not mine. You don't get to touch none of mine. You don't get to touch none of my grandchildren. And here's the deal. I have learned, see, at first this thing has for me been about my children. Fighting for my children. Fighting for my children in the spirit, in the hills, in the mountains. I stay in the hills. I stay in the mountains. I stay before the Lord. Fighting for for my children keeping my hands lifted as best I can for my children with the help of the Lord and thankfully with the help of the Holy Spirit fighting for my children but here's one of the things that I've come to learn over the years it's not enough it's not enough that's why I do all the writings that's why I'm no longer on social media and I do all the videos and I have the websites, the artisanspen.com, the artisanspen.org. I, I have this stuff because I'm trying to reach more people. It has become important to me. See, you got to understand this. My children are important to me. 
But my children are each individual. They're each nations. They each have their children. And they're those who are important to my children. Which means that they're important to me too. So therefore, I'm not just fighting for my children. I'm not just fighting for my grandchildren. I'm fighting for those who are important for them too. Which means anybody and everybody connected to my children and my grandchildren in any type of way. I'm fighting for you. Thus the videos. Thus the videos. You need to see. You need to understand. You need to get your healing. You need to get your deliverance. You need to understand that Jesus is reaching for you and you need to reach back. And I'm believing it. One to chase a thousand, two, two would chase ten thousand. I am one person. I'm chasing a thousand, but let me tell you how I'm two. Because Jesus said that he wants us to be in union with him as he is in union with the Father. Therefore, my numbers have just doubled. <laughs> my numbers have just doubled. Because if I'm in union with Jesus Christ, who is in union with God Almighty, I, I feel like I'm chasing more than 10,000. You, you feel where I'm coming from? You feel what I'm, where I'm coming from? I am fighting for you. I might not know you. I might not know you. But God loves you. Jesus did everything he did for us. For us. I might not know you, but I don't have to know you because it's not about me knowing you. It's about the fact that King Jesus did this for us. You're important. He gave me this assignment to speak this word and thus I am speaking it. Amalek cannot touch you no longer. You can say no. You are going to overcome. I am speaking that because that's what the word of God said. That look, go back to Ezekiel chapter 37. God said you will live. He said that. I'm simply showing you what God's word said. He already spoke it over you. I don't give a care what anybody has said to you. I don't give a care what anybody has said about you. I don't give a care what anybody has done to you. God is going to deal with all of that. I am telling you, you are coming out. You're coming out. You're coming out. And I'm believing it. I got enough faith to believe it because I believe God. Because I know how great God is. I know what he did for me. I am seeing him work in the lives of my children. They might be going through some stuff, but that's only temporary. Your trials, your tests are going to be your testimony. I'm believing Ezekiel chapter 37. I am believing Exodus chapter 17 and um, Amalekite, the spirit of Amalekite. It's been a wrap for you. Don't get me to singing. <laughs> Cause I look, I'll go R and B in a second. I will go R and B. Who is that? Mariah Carey? It's a wrap for you, baby. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Cause I believe. And because God said it. And he cannot fail his word. He said it so let me remind you last scripture for real last scripture and I already shared it but I'm going to share it again for GP just because this is December, uh, December. this is Deuteronomy chapter 25 is verse number 17 18 and 19 this is what it says remember what Amalekite did to you remember all that torment that you was going through remember all that depression and stress and anxiety and remember how it was just weighing down on you remember the depression remember how all of that was weighing down on you remember the struggles remember the people who was being um evil to you and stealing from you and trying to break you remember uh, remember amalekite Remember what he did to you? Remember Amalekite, what Amalekite did to you on the way as you were coming out of Egypt? On the way as you were coming out of Egypt. Egypt is a place of bondage that God said he will bring you out. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me move this some so you can see the covenant. The old covenant. You got to go through the old before you get to the new. 
the old covenant. He said, I will bring you out of Egypt. Your bondage, whatever your bondage is, whatever is holding you down, whatever is trying to keep you bound, it's got to break. It's about to loosen up. It's, it's coming off. It's falling off. It's falling off. It says, remember what Amalekite did to you on the way as you were coming out of Egypt. How he met you on the way and attacked your rear ranks. Attacked you when you was tired. Attacked you when you were feeling weak. And attacked you. It says, all the stragglers at your rear when you were tired and weary and he did not fear God. Big mistake. Therefore it shall be when the Lord your God has given you rest from your enemies all around. In the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess as an inheritance. That you will blot out the remembrance of Amalekite from under heaven. You shall not forget. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So yeah, this video is dedicated to my children. And this video is dedicated to my grandchildren. And this video is dedicated to everybody that is important to my grandchildren and connected in any way. Whether you are a friend, whether you are a family member, extended family member, this video is dedicated to everybody connected to me in any type of way. Whether I know you or not, you're subscribed on my page, I'm praying for you. You're subscribed on my page. I'm believing for your freedom. I'm, I'm praying for it. I am expecting it in expectation of it. I am willing to stand for it. I will spend nights up. I've done it before. I have no problem with staying up from one night to the next. I've been trained in this. I am praying for you. I am standing for you. I am believing for your freedom. That's it. That's all. And everybody connected to you. Each one reach one. So therefore, this thing keeps going. It keeps going. It keeps going. See, when the enemy had the opportunity to kill me, he should have. But he didn't. Because <laughs> he couldn't. And here I am. And I'm now where I'm supposed to be. Which is, got my hands up. Lifted, standing before the Lord in the word, digging in the word, sharing this stuff, speaking this stuff, believing it, and walking it to the best of my ability with the help of King Jesus and God's grace that helps me. Now, y'all, it's time. It's time. It's time to be healed, to be set free, to be delivered from all past traumas not some all not some not one not two not three all 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 that means that if we get some but it's some more and it start coming up some more, them too if we clean you y'all know how you get to cleaning and you kind of overlook a spot go back that too that too all all that's how great god's mercies is it covers all it covers all let me stop before i keep going <laughs> this means war i got got the victory i got the sweet sweet victory in jesus yes i do he is a mighty conqueror in him i would trust all my battles he'll fight i got got the victory i got the sweet sweet victory in jesus for me he died but it rose on the third day that's what i got true victory every day yeah I got the victory and so do you. All right. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for watching.